Hello again. We're going to try to keep this one quick. I say that all the time. I always mean it, and I'm always trying to get shorter, but we'll see how today goes. Um, I want to talk to you guys today about how to get the best possible image quality for wildlife, particularly for portraits, uh, wildlife portraits, out of your X-H2S or whether it's your X-T4, your X-T3, uh, your X-T5, X-H2, or even if it's a non-Fuji camera, especially if you're shooting a crop sensor camera, presumably with uh, like a Sigma or a, a 70 to 300 Fuji or the 1 to 400 5.6 or uh, my favorite lens, the 150 to 600 f8. Assuming you're shooting between 5.6 and f8 as your your typical focal length uh, aperture, um, shooting on a crop sensor body. That's who this video is going to be for today. But I'm betting that if you're bored watching this and you're shooting much uh, much more expensive gear, then you'll probably also still maybe learn some ideas. Uh, I did not come up with these ideas. Many people have done it before, but one of my good friends, Mr. Matt Parrish, um, dude with a Fuji, now he's dude with an R10. Check him out on Instagram if you want to see lots of better examples than what I'm showing, but <clears throat> we've been shooting together the last couple of years, and we both kind of went through all the phases, overcropping, uh, over topazing, um, and in Matt's pursuit of image quality, he started experimenting with slower shutter speeds and he convinced me to do it and that's what this is kind of all about so um we are going to flip over here we're going to use on one today because lightroom was being a total dink um and yeah let's jump into this so we are going to start right here okay right here is my chickadee okay so this is an example of kind of a normal shot I think where like nothing really goes well um, we've shot this at 1 400th uh, using the X-H2S and the 600 um, my, my first golden rule for trying to get your best image quality out of these cameras and sensors is you have to get close none of these shots are cropped um, I could crop a little bit but I probably wouldn't un unless there was a particular reason these are definitely close enough to not not need much cropping and especially you know if you're trying to shoot chickadees like uh, this tight it's going to be very tough to frame so sometimes you might want to crop in a little bit but you don't want to take a tiny bird where you can't see any details and try to crop in until you can so what are my issues here with this photo um and I, you could do a couple of things with this we're not going to edit everything but you know pop the shadows a little could bring out some sharpening and you might look at that and say it's okay um you might like it you might not i don't know don't judge me but my issues with this is ISO 2000 and 1 400th. It's not really fast enough to freeze motion every time. And the ISO is still high. ISO 2000 is still pretty high on these crop sensors. And you can see, like looking here, I don't see any noise with my eye. A couple of dust spots I should clean. But I don't see any noise at all. Nice rendering, obliterated background because there's nothing behind them. That's all great. But when I zoom in, you can start to see the noise even in the gray sky here, and you see it in his, uh, his feather detail. So, you know, can this clean up? Let's take a quick look. And again, we're not going to edit each one. I just want to kind of start with a normal example. I normally turn down this enhanced detail slider here because I think it gets a little heavy handed. Cleans up the noise really well, for sure. The noise is gone. No noise is great. Really down on topaz lately, but I mean, my issue is like, you're still losing detail. So that's fine. I would use this, especially if this was a unique bird and a, um, a one-off or something where I didn't think this was gonna happen again, but this is, this is not fantastic. So the experiment, and I'll say I also, this borrows a little bit from one of my personal heroes, Paul Nicklin, who talks about, um, uh, he talks about shooting in kind of different mentalities, and, and he, he goes into a shoot basically saying he's going to start by getting the safe shots, um, you know, the stuff that he's there to get. If I'm, I'm not suggesting that you're going to try some of these weird settings I'm talking about as your default. Um, you're probably going to want, you know, something, something like this <clears throat> might even be a good walk around setting. Um, where if you see something and you rattle off a burst at 1 400th, probably something's going to be sharp. And at ISO 2000, you can clean it up enough to get a usable picture if you saw something really cool. 
But my point is, once you've got those basic shots and you want to try to move on to something like really spectacular, then that's where I think we should start to try to mess with our settings. So in our pursuit of slow shutter speeds, how do we move? There we go. So we're going to start dropping things down. Now, I will say these are all shot at 15 frames per second, and you have to do the math. I'm, I'm not in math brain mode today. But at a certain point, you'll get too slow where the camera can't take exposures that slow and keep up the frame rate. Um, and to be honest, I don't even know if it was actually shooting at 15 at 150th. Again, math. But, but it, it still felt pretty fast to me in the field. It was shooting quick. I didn't have any... Uh, I didn't have any issues with anything that we were getting. And you can see my ISO has been able to drop from 2000 down to 640, which is a pretty big difference at 150th. And I think much less noise. Now, again, this is a, a slightly lighter bird, but you're getting a much cleaner image. Now, this isn't perfectly sharp here. I would, uh, I'll show you some better examples. But I think it's interesting to me that when I, I never in a million years when I was a beginner thought I could shoot birds sharp at 1 50th of a second. Uh, and, and especially, again, like at normal framing, I think that's looking really good. And I would also expect that, that um, any tiny motion blur there is likely going to clean up very well. See, that's, that's going overboard up here with tack sharp, but this is... Uh, this is tack sharp from uh, from on one. Some of these things can be a little bit heavy handed, but you, you know, you're getting, you can see if you give it something decent to begin with, it can really sharpen that up. That's, that's pretty crazy. And honestly, I've had a couple of people ask me why they've seen me using Lightroom. Uh, two reasons. One of them is I find that Lightroom works faster on my my computer it loads raw files about two to three seconds faster so i'm still doing all my culling and stuff uh from big shoots so i i thought you know if lightroom worked quicker that was great uh the other reason is i find the subject detect ai on lightroom hits a little bit more um than on one but on one is very good i mean and i will say like as as much as lightroom has a couple advantages i really hate 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 topaz and I really hate exporting things to Topaz. And I have this folder of files here that I wanted to use for the video. And for some reason, I couldn't even get Lightroom to find the folder. I imported it. Um, and I guess because I'd imported the shots previously or something, Lightroom was really giving me giving me the gears. So, um, you know, let's just see even what happens if we, we turn off Tack Sharp and just do no noise. And you're getting something like this. So it's actually, you know, I got to say, this is like one of the first times I've really used Tack Sharp and really liked it. And it's interesting because I think um, if you if you turn that down a bit, it's giving me a lot of sharpness. In and it's supposed to work like this for like motion blurring and stuff. So it's giving me a lot of sharpness in the the photo overall, and I think that is pretty pretty tasty. But again, image quality kind of starts when you're you're not cropping things to pieces. You can also use in here these AI adaptive presets. So you'll see like, okay, so light details. So that's gonna hit the bird and I'd have to go in and, and change that down because that's adding probably even more. Let's just see what it's doing. It's probably adding some micro contrast or something that's kind of over, over cooking it. So if we turn off the contrast, let's just turn down that. And then there's probably like a local I'm not seeing where they're doing that, but they're pop. They're either way. They're popping the the bird a little bit on there. So, um, let's carry on. This is this is going longer. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. I talk too much. What you will notice when you start shooting these bursts at these slow shutter speeds is you're going to get a lot of misses. I had a friend ask me the other day what my hit rate was, and and it's like it's laughably low, and it's not because the camera is not autofocusing. The autofocus is working great. It's because if you move just a bit, the bird moves a bit, you move a bit at the same time, the bird moves a bit, and it just kind of all falls apart. Um, but if you rattle off enough shots in a burst, again, 15, 20 frames per second, you're going to get stuff that works. And I think, again, like something like this really looks good to me. And you can, uh, Topaz has motion blur sharpening, uh, on ones is really great. So if you're giving it something that already has this kind of predefined detail, I, I mean, again, especially when I'm not pixel peeping, that already looks really good to me. Um, and if you want to tighten this up, you can. 
And, and again, I know there's going to be people out there who say, oh, you got to shoot fast. You got to shoot faster shutter speeds. I say, sure. But I would personally rather have a tiny bit of motion blur that either doesn't bother me or I can live with than have noise cluttering up those details. Because the nice thing here is there's, there's no noise in this bird at all. No noise. <laughs> That's what on one is called. Funny. Um, okay, let's get off the Junkos. Uh, Chickadee, is this the raw? I think this is the raw. Uh, so this is even slower. This is at 140th. And chickadees are really tough because they do not sit still. So I would say like they are easily twice as active as the Junkos. Um, but again, pretty happy with how this is looking. Let's just pop one of those, uh, pop one of those presets on him. So this just this AI just kind of masks out the bird automatically. That's way too much contrast for my take. Uh, let's turn that way down. Let's try to see if we can get anything in those shadows on the bird. That's, there's not there's definitely underexposed this one. But I think overall, even without treating it, like there's a lot more sharpness and detail here. That feels better to me. Let's let this load. This, sorry, this one's got all the noise processing and stuff on it. Yeah, the other one definitely feels better to me. I feel like we're, we're not missing as much stuff there. So what do we have here? This is a... Uh, this is a Junko again in the wind, blowing the breeze blowing at 1 40th of a second. Lots of detail there. Now this is an example of a, let's let this load. So this is a shot where I see a lot of people online post stuff like this. And again, if you're an intermediate and you've kind of learned better than you might know, but, but little songbirds, you're out shooting them on a gray day at 1 16, uh, 1 1600th of a second at 6,400 ISO. There's nothing here. You get a little bit of detail here um, but like the, the darks, like, and just look at the noise there. And I don't, I don't think this is going to clean well at all. Let's just even just do no noise on its own. Bring down the enhanced detail. No, there's, there's just nothing there. It just smudges it smudges it all out it gets rid of the noise and you just have black shadows so i i think it's really critical to try to keep your iso levels low again if you don't zoom in at all um you know you might be able to tolerate this uh back here but i think if you start really wanting to to see the details on the birds i think that's where your settings really matter so this is the same thing uh this is the same thing so this junko let's just do a quick quick one on this so you can see a ton of noise at 6400 this is easier than the chickadee because he's not pure black like this is a shot this is indicative of a lot of stuff i would have taken in the past that i would work with and to be honest it's not to say that i don't have shots that that come out like this at all um sometimes you just have the wrong settings and i think it is important knowing how to how to work with things um but again if you can if you can get those settings right in camera, I would, like I, sh I showed in the other stuff, I would have much rather had this at a way lower ISO and then not have to hit them this hard. Still comes out looking good, I think, but it would definitely be easier if we didn't have to do all that treatment to it. And again, here, a little bit further away, so I'd have to crop it more to get in on them. A um, couple more. Let's just power through these. So 640th um at 2000 again yeah we can see again now so now we got a, still a little bit of motion from him turning his head but also noise um also obviously using your light is going to help a lot more if you add contrast in the the shot naturally that's going to make your life much much easier and then you don't have to clean up as much stuff or when you do clean it up there's more there to already work with so you know you you hit this you Let's just pop some shadows. So here, I'd probably mask this in and keep it dark. But again, I think the trick when you're shooting this kind of gear is how do you get um, image quality that you're happy with ultimately? And that's going to be up to you wherever you're comfortable shooting. But I think um, these little sensors don't love high ISO. And yes, you can shoot 6400. I've shot uh, 
twelve eight hundred and gotten away with it. But you can't crop that stuff and start cropping in on those details. And I think there's there's very few times you're going to need to shoot. Like here we had no light. This is just snow behind us. So no light, completely overcast in the dark at f8. Uh, I didn't need to be shooting this at 2000 at 1 640th. I could have dropped it. Uh, here's our little chickadee again, uh, 1 50th. Um, and, and this actually, again, like there's actually quite a bit of detail going on here. And we've got a fair bit of contrast already. Bring up the shadows just a bit. And then let's treat this guy. Uh, let's keep... Uh, let's just bring down this enhanced detail slider. Yeah, and there's, there's definitely... There's a... Oh, what am I doing? There's a lot more detail here on a shot like that. So again, you, you go in and paint and mask things out. But 150th, let it load. Lots of detail there. I mean, that that's about as crispy as, as I'm going to need, especially before treating something. Um, and what do we got? A little bit more. And lastly, I think we have another chickadee. And I think this is an example of one that, again, in the middle, I didn't like. Yeah, there's detail, but again, like our ISO, even at 1600 with no ambient light, we're losing it. So that's about it. Um, like I said, I, my advice is, is take your normal settings and go out in the field and do your thing. Learn how to use your light, learn how to use uh, proximity and get closer and then use your noise reduction tools and post-production um, appropriately and, and not heavy, heavy handedly. You shouldn't be going out into the field, assuming you're going to crop every photo and then, um, you know, use topaz sharpening and denoising like crazy because that's just your images are going to fall apart. But if you use all those things tastefully, you're going to be in good shape. And if you're getting to a point where you're doing that, then go out and try to shoot some slower shutter speeds and see what happens because you'll be amazed if you're shooting the X-H2S and that's predominantly what my channel's about, you'll be amazed how slow you can get away with on a camera with great stability in the lens and the body. So give it a try and uh, like, subscribe, share if you think that anyone would be interested in this. And as always, I would love to see your results, uh, whether it's Fuji or otherwise. Tag me, send me your flickers, follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm no pro, but happy to weigh in if you need any advice. So thanks so much. Talk to you soon.